Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of D&D Optimized, the show where each episode we take a deep dive into one specific character build and try to optimize it numerically for your chosen role. Uh, my name's Colby, and I will be your number crunching guide. So, if you are looking for a way to get the most out of your character, this show is for you. If you are looking for new ideas for your next character in your next D&D 5e campaign, this show is for you. And if you just love talking geeky numbers in a Dungeons & Dragons setting, this show is for you too. So welcome, and thanks for being here. Um, you know, the first two episodes, this is episode three, uh, and today we're going to be talking about the Bear Totem Barbarian. So the first couple of episodes I've been focusing on sustained damage builds, and I wanted to make this show about more than just sustained damage builds. Um, so today we're going to be looking at uh, a tanky control build. And when I say tanky, for the uninitiated, what I mean is someone who's hard to kill, and even also someone who can maybe do a good job of protecting not just themselves, but also their companions. Um, and so that's what we're going for with the build today with the, uh, with the Bear Totem Barbarian. You know, I wanted to start here as my first tanky uh, optimized build because the, the Bear Totem Barbarian is commonly thought of as the most difficult to kill character build in the game. Uh, it's it's a bane to many dungeon masters, um, and uh, and so I wanted to start there. But you know, in addition to being hard to kill, we're gonna we're going to build this character in a way that does give you some some nice control features um, to to try and help you uh, really protect your maybe more vulnerable uh, teammates and companions and party mates. So um, basic overview. The Bear Totem Barbarian, um, you know, the concept is you have the highest hit die in the game. You, you have the most hit points of any character uh, class as a Barbarian. Um, and thanks to the Bear Totem um, feat subclass, um, you are resistant to almost all damage types, meaning you're going to take half damage on just about every damage type. Um, so you can soak damage all day long. Um, and in, in addition to that, a couple of the feats uh, that you're going to be taking and some other things, you'll be able to really kind of lock opponents down, keep them from moving, keep them from getting to the back line to, uh, to hurt your friends, as it were, to the, those, those squishy wizards and spell slingers and archers and things that are standing at the back, dishing out a bunch of damage, and even, you know, the rogues and other melee uh, strikers or damage-dealing focused uh, companions. Um, your, your job is to draw the enemy fire, keep your friends safe, and stay alive for a long time while doing so. A um, couple of things about this before we jump into the actual build breakdown. Uh, you are not going to have a super high armor class. Um, barbarians, as a general rule, don't really. The problem is you can't, you can't wear heavy armor and benefit from rage. And rage gives you a lot of great things, including that damage resistance. Um, so it kind of defeats the purpose of a barbarian, um, both conceptually and numerically, to be running around in plate mail armor. Um, sure, you could potentially have a shield and do a one-handed weapon, but we're not going to do that um, because it's gonna, it would doing so would prevent you from using a pole arm and thereby giving up a lot of the control um, and and attack range. That you would get uh, from that pole. I'm not to mention damage. Um, and you know, as a bear totem barbarian, um, you getting hit a lot is kind of the point. If if you're if you're being a tank, um, you almost want to be a, an attractive target uh, for the enemies. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But but yeah, you're not going to have a high AC. You're just going to have a ton of hit points and you're going to have resistance to almost all damage types, therefore really letting you soak damage all day long. And you know, we'll, we'll look at maybe a fighter or a paladin build that's kind of another version of a tanky build uh, another time where they'll be using a shield and heavy armor and be a lot harder to hit. Um, but that is not the Bear Totem Barbarian. So 
let's jump into um, the actual build. All right, so uh, level one. Now, again, before we get into the specifics of the build, like always, I'm going to just mention the things that are most important to optimize this build, but if I don't mention it, then take whatever you want. Um, at level one, the race that you choose should be variant human, yawn, I know, but they're so good. Free feet is amazing. And uh, for the free feet that you take, it's going to be polearm master. For those of you who saw episode one, you will uh, remember my fondness for this feat. It's very good. Um, first of all, you do get an additional attack each round if you have your bonus action available. As a bonus action, you basically hit, uh, you make an attack with the butt of your polearm, which is going to be a halberd, a pike, or a glaive. Um, and, and you get to add any damage modifiers to that, so it's very nice for some additional damage. But for this build, the primary reason that we are taking Polearm Master is for the extra range that you get. You get reach with, uh, with the proper weapon, with the proper Polearm, and it lets you uh, hit from 10 feet away instead of 5. Um, and that's going to really help you control the battlefield and lock people down later on when we get the Sentinel feat at level 4, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, as far as the stats, you're going, if you're doing point by, you want to get 15 strength so that you can hit more often and do more damage. You want to get 15 constitution, and that's what we're going to be maxing first uh, with this build to increase your tankiness and your hit points. Um, I would probably recommend, well, I definitely recommend going 14 decks. Uh, that's going to help you with your, well, with your initiative, but also, uh, more importantly, with your armor class. Um, and then probably 10 wisdom, because that's an important save to have as, as good as possible, as well as some skills, perception, and things. Um, and uh, then just use intelligence and charisma as your dumb stats. Uh, put 8 there. Um, for your equipment... You, you get a martial weapon, and you want to make sure it's it's a good polearm, meaning a halberd, a pike, or a, a glaive. I prefer the glaive, but really it, it's 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 uh, cosmetic. Um, they all do a d10 of damage, and they qualify for the polearm master feat. They all have reach. Um, you do not start with armor. Now, fortunately, you have this nice little thing called unarmored defense which for the Barbarian lets you add your Constitution modifier to your armor class, in addition to your Dexterity, which you, you will typically get when you're unarmored. So you will be starting with a 15 armor class. Pretty good for, for, no, um, for no armor, because I didn't mention this, but of course, as a variant human, you get a plus one to two stats. You're going to do Strength and Constitution, right? So you'll have a 16 Strength and a 16 Constitution. So. Anyway, you'll have a 15 AC. Um, I, would, I would be careful of the unarmored uh, defense uh, ability. It's, it's a bit of a trap. It's nice when you're starting out, but as a barbarian, you're proficient with medium armor. You're going to want medium armor. Um, in fact, if you can uh, take gold instead of just standard starting equipment and you can afford a halberd or a pike or a glaive, and some cheap medium armor scale mail, for example, is only 50 gold. And it will give you, with your dex bonus, because medium armor lets you apply at least just, just a maximum of plus 2 from dex bonus. And since you have a 14 dex, you get a plus 2 dex bonus. So with scale mail, which is a 14 AC, plus your dex, you'll be at a 16 AC. Better than 15, right? Um, and... and it's pretty much always going to be better for you to to use medium armor than to go unarmored. Um, you will, you know, later on, at level 8, for example, you might say, well, at level 8, I'm going to bump my constitution, and now I could take off my scale mail and still have a 16 armor class. True. But hopefully by level 8, you're going to have some half plate, right, which is medium armor still, but that's a... 15 AC plus your deck, so now you're at 17. So you're going to be better off with g getting the best medium armor that you can find. Y you might even argue, well, you know, by 12, I'll, I'll have a 20 constitution, and, and then it would be the same as 
you know, having uh, having half plate. But maybe by level 12, you've got some half plate plus one. If not, feel free to run around naked. Um, but, uh, and uh, you know, especially if you can get something like bracers of defense, which give you a plus two to your AC if you're not wearing armor, you know, obviously you can deal with that uh, on a case by case. But generally speaking, you're going to want the best medium armor you can find. Um, you don't want heavy armor to reiterate because then you can't rage and that sort of defeats the purpose of being a barbarian. Um, all right, so speaking of rage, let's talk about rage. Um, it costs a bonus action to do, and so you won't get that extra hit with your pole arm um, in round one, but it is always, it should always be the first thing that you do in combat because um, when you are raging, it lasts for one minute, and you get you start off with two of them per long rest, so you should be able to have it up most fights, and, and that, that will increase. You'll get more of them as you level up, so you really should have it available most fights, uh, if not all fights. But it's going to give you bonus damage um, that will scale as you level, and it's going to... Um, it's going to give you advantage on strength checks, not, not attacks, but just other, you know, strength checks. Um, and then key for us is it will, at level one, give you resistance to piercing, bludgeoning, and slashing damage, basically all non-magical weapon damage. Um, so that means you're going to take half damage anytime you get you, you hit with, you know, piercing, slashing, or, or uh, bludgeoning damage. That's huge, obviously. It's going to greatly increase your tankiness, your survivability. Um, one thing to keep in mind, rage will end, at least right now, it will end if you don't either make an attack or take damage. Um, and so make sure that you're always attacking, right? If, if you're not getting hit, you better you know keep some javelins on hand or something so that you can at least attempt to attack somebody. You don't have to hit anybody, you just have to make an attack. Um, so constantly be fighting while you're raging. Um, and also you can't cast spells or concentrate on spells while you're raging, so there, there's, no, there's no caster multi-class option here that we're going to be looking at. Um, not if we're trying to optimize, anyway. Again, remember, always rage. First thing, always rage. All right, at level two, you get Reckless Attack. This is important. Um, so Reckless Attack, if you, you, you have to decide before your first attack on your turn that you will be, whether or not you will be using Reckless Attack. And if you do, you get advantage on all of your attacks that turn, but your enemies have advantage against you on all of their attacks against you until the beginning of your next turn. Some of you may think, well, I'll have to be careful when I use this. I would argue that you should use this basically all the time. Here's why. First of all, okay, when you get sentinel feet later, and we'll talk about it, it's going to be important, super important, to be landing your, your uh, reaction attacks that sentinel feet will give you so that you can reduce a character's speed to zero. Um, it's a reaction though, and you can't decide when you're having a reaction attack, I'm going to be attacking recklessly. You have to decide before your first attack on your turn, when it's your turn, um, and you'll get your reaction later potentially. So it's very important to land that reaction attack, and, and you want to have advantage when you're doing so to make sure that it lands. Also, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people who are familiar with video game world think about, um, you know, MMOs, multiplayer, massively multiplayer online games, World of Warcraft, things like that, and other role-playing games that you play. There, there is often a, a trifecta, they, they call it, you know, a tank, a healer, and a damage dealer. Um, and as a tank in video games, a lot of the times, you have taunt abilities, right? An ability to force an enemy to attack you. Um, that doesn't really exist in Dungeons and & Dragons. And, and I think for good reason. Um, but it would be nice if there were things that you could do in the game to, to try and emulate that if you are playing a tanky control type character. I would argue that 
perhaps the best way to maybe not force but strongly encourage enemies to attack you is by giving them advantage when you do. Um, it's very difficult for most dungeon masters, or I shouldn't say dungeon masters, for enemy uh, NPCs to not try and attack you if they have advantage on doing so, right? Um, it's like you're just this big juicy target and they just can't help themselves because they have advantage. And, and even though taking damage is not great, keeping your friends from getting hit is kind of the point of this character, right? And you are better suited to take that hit than anybody else in your party. And so why not increase your damage and also increase the likelihood that the enemies are going to be targeting you as opposed to, you know, the squishy wizard uh, in the back or the thief uh, rogue, you know, standing next to you. So use reckless attacks. Use it with abandon. Unless you're about to die, and maybe even then, um, use reckless attacks. It's going to increase your damage significantly, and it's going to have... A, the more important aspect of uh, having the enemies be more likely to attack you than somebody else. Um, you also at level two get danger sense, which is a great tanky feature. Um, it gives you advantage on deck saves uh, when you can see uh, the thing that you're that you're saving against. So, for example, a trap goes off and you need to make a deck save to avoid it. If you see the trap going off, you have advantage. Wizard casts a fireball at you. You see that fireball coming, you have advantage. That's huge. I mean, um, you know, you think about a barbarian taking half damage on everything. Uh, well, you'll take, a, you'll take half damage on, on just about everything next level. Um, but, you know, when you're taking half damage on a fireball spell and you make the deck save, which already cuts the damage in half, well, you know, Instead of 30 damage, it did 15, but you're a bar bear barbarian, so you took 7 or 8 or whatever, rounded up, rounded down. Um, that's laughable, right? So, very great tanky feature. All right, at level 3, you get to choose a primal path. And the primal path you choose will be a totem warrior, and for your totem spirit, it will be bear, because you are a bear barb. And now, while raging, you get resistance to all damage, except psychic. So be careful about enemies that do psychic damage. But otherwise, resistance to all damage. So you take half damage against just about everything, and that's kind of OP. Um, at level four, you're going to take the sentinel feat. So I've, I've built this up now. Let's talk about it. So the sentinel feat does a few things for you. Um, it lets you get an opportunity attack against somebody even if they disengage. Remember, opportunity attack is when somebody who's within your attack range tries to leave your your attack your melee attack range. Um, you get to take, as a reaction, an opportunity attack against them. Usually, someone disengages, you don't get an opportunity attack. Sentinels do. Um, also, you get a free attack as a reaction. If an enemy within five feet of you attacks someone other than you, so that's going to be a you know disincentivizing for them to attack someone other than you. So that's great. You want them to attack you. Um, so if they attack someone else, even if if they're a ranged attacker and they're attacking somebody fifty feet away, if you're within five feet of them, you can use your reaction to take an attack against them. Cool, but. Be careful not to use this if you think you might want to save your reaction for an opportunity attack. Um, because as a sentinel, um, opportunity you get a, your opportunity attacks cause the hit cause a creature's speed to become zero for the rest of the turn, and that's the main reason we are taking this feat. Um, so if you get an opportunity against somebody and, and you hit them with it, they are immobilized for the rest of, of uh, their turn, which is huge. It's going to help you keep your back line safe. Coupled with Polearm Master, this is particularly powerful. Polearm Masters get to take an opportunity attack even when someone just enters for the first time their reach. And again, you have a 10-foot reach with that polearm that you're using. So if somebody's just trying to skirt past you 
and get to that squishy wizard in the back, um, if they're within 10 feet of you, you can reach out and hit them with an opportunity attack and now they're immobilized. So it's just a great couple feats that let you really have some battlefield control. And when you think about it, you know, your polearm lets you attack from 10 feet away on each side plus the five foot square that you occupy. You're a 25 foot blob in the middle of a battlefield just locking people down and hitting with reckless attacks so that they are strongly encouraged to attack you instead of your teammates. Um, it's just a great kind of control tanky build and it's just it's a lot of fun um, to, to, to exercise that level of control on a battlefield right and also be so hard to kill at the same time. Um, at level 5 you get an extra attack, that's great, more damage, uh, and fast movement. So you get an extra 10 feet of movement, as long as you're not wearing heavy armor, and of course you're not, because you're a barbarian. Um, it just lets you get to the enemies quicker uh, and keep attacking, so you can keep your rage up. All right, at level six, you get a nice little feature called Aspect of the Beast, which gives you advantage on strength checks to push, pull, lift, or break, that's cool. Um, and let's do a level 6 damage report. Now, thus far we've been talking about DPR, damage per round. We're not optimizing this character for DPR, we are optimizing them for tankiness. So I had to come up with a couple of different stats to help us quantify a character's tankiness. Um, I'm calling the first one DTPR, uh, damage taken per round. And then the second that's maybe more important, which is uh, turns to die or rounds to die, we'll call it RTD, rounds to die. Um, the challenge here is coming up with, with, a, with a control enemy that's hitting me um, to determine how much damage they're doing and how long it's going to take me to die if I just sit there taking that damage over and over and don't get healed or whatever. Um, that's difficult. There, there are a couple of ways to tackle it. I decided against the, you know, try and find an average DPR of an enemy for a certain challenge rating mode um, because it doesn't tell me some important information that I would need, like what's the monster's plus to hit chance, how many how many attacks are they getting per turn, and things like that. It just was imprecise, and I didn't want to rely on other people's math either. Um, so what I've opted to do is um, just pick a couple of a couple of combat encounters at each of our damage report levels and just crunch the numbers for those specific um, monsters uh, or enemies. So I, I'm doing a boss fight and I'm doing kind of what would maybe be considered a more typical uh, combat encounter. Um, the boss fight is going to be one creature of your same challenge level, and the, uh, the, other, the other one's going to be four or five creatures of roughly a third. Th their challenge rating is roughly a third of your level. Um, and both of these were designed to be considered a medium difficulty combat encounter as per the Dungeon Master's Guide uh, encounter builder, for those that are familiar with that. So... For example, at level six, um, the boss fight monster that I chose was a young white dragon. Dragon seemed appropriate. This is Dungeons and Dragons after all. And um, the, the other combat encounter was, uh, at level six, four uh, berserkers, right? I tried to pick a fairly kind of commonplace um, enemy that really just attacks you. Um, and, and hits you. And so, um, yeah, it may feel a little arbitrary, a little random, but I think if we can just stick with the same monsters um, for every tanky build that we take a look at, it will serve a, a decent purpose of giving us an idea as to how one build compares to another as far as, you know, their, their ability to be tanky and hard to kill. So, at level six, um, a young white dragon is going to, on average, do 19 damage uh, per round to this uh, bear barbarian, so 19 DTPR. 
Um, and the RTD, the rounds to die, is four. Um, this character would die in the fourth round, uh, on average, if they just stood there and got wailed on by a young white dragon for, for four rounds. <clears throat> um, for, the, for the other encounter, uh, berserkers, four berserkers would do 16 uh, DTPR, uh, or I guess the barbarian would take 16 DTPR, and uh, they would die in round five. So their RTD is five. And just for fun, if you were fighting 10 kobolds and they were all just wailing on you or th shooting their slings at you, uh, they would, the, the DTPR is 17 and your RTD is four. Um, if you've got a better idea for, you know, a controlled uh, way to calculate and quantify tankiness of a character, feel free to let me know. Um, but that's what we're going to go with for now. So, uh, at level seven, you get Feral Instinct, which gives you advantage on initiative. That's important because you want to be first into the fray uh, so that you can rage, most importantly. You want to be, be able to rage before anybody starts attacking you so that you can take half damage on, on all of those attacks. At level 8, you get an ability score increase or a feat, but you're going to take the ability score to buff your constitution. So you are now at an 18 constitution, which is great. More hit points, better saves. Um, you're at level nine, you get brutal critical, and that's fun. Um, basically, if you crit, you get an extra die for your damage roll. So instead of rolling two dice for a critical, you'd get three on your weapon, your weapon die. Um, and that's great, particularly if uh, you're concerned about DPR. Um, if we were more concerned about DPR, we might look for ways to improve our crit rate, but we're not. Um, as concerned, but it is nice, and especially since you're going to be reckless attacking all the time, you're going to be critting a fair amount. Uh, your crit rate is, you know, 9.75% instead of 5% when you're attacking with advantage every time. So anyway, um, going to help you do more damage. Uh, damage report for level 9. Um, the boss fight, challenge rating 9, um, young blue dragon is going to do 21 damage per round to you, and you will be dead in round six if you just stood there and got beat. Again, um, well, maybe not again, but just to let everybody know, for these boss fights and for the for the other encounters as well, I'm not using lair actions or breath weapons or uh, you know, legendary actions or anything like that. I know that's part of what makes that enemy tough. Um, it's just a little harder to quantify. You know, do they have legendary actions available? Did they use them on someone else? Are they using them on you every time? Which is it? Is it a tail attack? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't account for that. I'm just accounting for just their average just hit you attacks. Just to clarify. Um, <clears throat> your normal encounter is four hobgoblin captains. They're going to do 26 damage per round to you, and you will be dead in round five. Um, and just for fun, 10 kobolds would do 16 damage per round to you, and you would last a whole seven rounds of just, just being a target dummy for 10 kobolds. Um, at level 10, you get the Commune with Nature spell, which is nice. It's a little, you can cast it as a ritual, gives you some nice utility. At level 11, um, you get Relentless Rage, and this is an awesome tanky feature. So if you would be, if you take damage that would reduce you to zero hit points that doesn't kill you outright which means it would have to put you at a negative your hit point total which is really hard for somebody to do because you've got over 100 hit points at this level i believe um, so if you take damage that would knock you unconscious um, you all you have to do is make a make a constitution save against a dc of 10 so you just have to get a 10 constitution save to go to one hit point instead of zero. And that's very easy for you because right now with your proficiency and you know what you've been putting into con, you have a plus eight to your con checks. Um, so all you gotta do is not critically fail. Just don't roll a one and instead of going unconscious, you'll go to one hit point and that is gonna save your bacon a bunch of times. Somebody to get you a clutch heal, drink a healing potion, maybe finish off the enemy and end the combat altogether. <clears throat> um, the nice thing is, 
If it happens again before you finish a long rest, so if you would if you take damage and you would go to zero, um, then uh, you you can try and save again, but this time the save is a 15. So you have to get a 15 con save. Still, you got a better than average chance of getting it. You only need to roll a seven, right? Um, and then it would go to 20 if it happened again. Now it's a little tougher, but still manageable. Even the next time at 25, barely manageable. Um, and so that's great. It really helps you stay in the fight and survive a little bit longer uh, and keep your, your, your friends, that is, from, from taking damage a little bit longer. Um, and after a long rest, it resets back to a DC 10. <clears throat> so that continues to add 5 every time uh, per long rest, every time it happens. Um, at level 12, you get another ability score increase, and you're going to max your constitution now. So you've got a 20 constitution. You are a big beefcake. At level 13, your brutal, crit brutal critical is now um, two extra dice when you crit. So if you get a crit, you're rolling four uh, d10 for your pull arm, which is kind of awesome. Damage report. So at level 13, your boss fight against a challenge rating 13 monster is against a, an adult white dragon. They will be doing 24 damage per round to you uh, on average, and you will die in round 7 if you just sit there and take it. Um, a, a more typical combat encounter, you're going to be fighting 5 Helmed Horrors, and they would be doing 38 damage per round to you, and you'd die in round 5. And 10 Kobolds would... Continue to do 16 damage per round to you. Your armor class hasn't gone up, and it probably won't unless you get some magical armor. Um, but you'll live for 10 rounds. You're just a pincushion to a bunch of kobolds. Uh, at level 14, this is a big level for you. Um, you get, as a bear barb, you get totemic attunement. Um, and so while raging, enemies that are within 5 feet of you have disadvantage when they're attacking anyone other than you, uh, unless they are unable to see or hear you or are immune to being frightened. So that's very rare. Very rarely, um, if they are within five feet of you, they will have disadvantage if attacking anybody else. You can probably stop doing uh, reckless attacks now if you want to, um, if you want to continue to do so because you really need the damage or you want to make sure you land an opportunity attack to root somebody, fine, but you're, you're probably going to be the most attractive target, at least to um, baddies that are within five feet of you. So try and get up next to the biggest baddie, um, or ideally multiple baddies, so you can uh, have a soft taunt uh, on, on your enemies. At uh, level 15, you get Persistent Rage. This is great. Uh, rage only ends if you fall unconscious or choose to end it. So even if you don't take damage or don't make an attack, you can continue raging. That's great. Um, at level 16, you get an ability score or a feat. A um, couple options here that I'll talk about. If you want more damage or more control, you're probably going to want to bump your strength to 18 just to make sure you land consistently land those hits and or do a little more damage. Of course, we're optimizing this guy for tankiness primarily, so I would probably take the toughness feat. Um, that's going to give you an extra two hit points per level, and at level 16, that's an extra 32 hit points. That's a lot. Um, so probably want to go toughness. At level 17, the last level we'll discuss, um, your brutal critical is now three dice. So if you crit, you're rolling 5d10 with that polearm. Um, but the damage report, your boss fight is against a challenge rating 17 adult red dragon, the quintessential D&D &D boss fight, right? Um, he would be doing 29 damage per round to you, and you uh, would survive for nine rounds, well, until round nine. Um, not accounting for legendary actions and, and layer actions and things, but that's awesome, right? And, and speaking of, uh, in fact, most of the time when you do the math, I didn't talk about breath weapons, for example, on dragons, you would almost prefer that they shoot fire at you, 
and your friends, maybe not so much, but you're probably going to take less damage um, because you're probably going to make your save. And even if you don't, you're going to take half damage on that, and that usually is going to be less, uh, depending on the level and depending on the enemy, than uh, just their claw and bite attacks would. So anyway, uh, breath weapon, not so bad for you. For your friends, maybe. Um, your normal average encounter is going to be against uh, five earth elementals, which would be putting some hurt on you. Um, action economy, right? Uh, lots of enemies hurt more than one big bad enemy, generally speaking, in Dungeons and & Dragons. And that particularly is the case as the challenge rating of those enemies go up. So um, you'd be taking 63 damage per round, and you would die in round four. Um, that hurts, but uh, that's, that's a medium encounter for a party of four at level 17. Um, Ten kobolds would take forever to kill you. You'd take 16 damage per round and, and would live until round 15. So um, that's just for fun. Final thoughts on the bear barb. I have never heard my dungeon master complain more about any other character build. Um, not, that you're not that your dungeon master is your enemy with the goal of killing you. But he kind of is. Don't tell him I said that. Um, I never thought that I would want to play a barbarian. It's not my thing, right? Um, I tend to prefer dex-based melee champions for whatever reason. Uh, characters. Um, but I rolled one for a one-off game that we're doing right now. Um, he, was, he wasn't quite this build. It was a little more optimized for damage and a little less for tankiness. But my goodness, it was fun to play. It is fun to play. Um, he gets hit a lot, uh, but it's okay. And the damage that you put out is is just really impressive, um, even even when optimized for tankiness. Um, so, of course, as I've mentioned, the character would be a lot tankier if you turned off reckless attacks. But you know, the the point, as I've said, is to really draw the enemy fire, right? Um, and there's no better taunt. I think, than, than making yourself kind of easy to hit. Um, and if you can soak up that damage, all the better reason to, to do that. Um, I'm, I'm very curious to see how uh, the, the DTPR and the RTD numbers match up to, you know, a, a short sword and shield fighter or paladin that are optimized for tankiness, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing that uh, a little bit later and, and making a comparison. Um, final note on, on my final thoughts here. If the, bear, if the bear barb is the closest we get to a video game version of a tank, um, you're really going to want to make sure that you follow that uh, trilogy, the trifecta, holy trinity, um, and have a good healer with you because this guy is going to take a lot of damage even even though he's taking half damage on everything he's going to be you know if played right um he's going to be taking a lot of hits and you're going to want to make sure that you've got somebody in your pocket that can uh, that can try and keep him from dying so bring a healer um dm tips uh you know there are there are a lot of ways that if you're a dungeon master struggling with feeling that you know you've got this bear barb and he's impossible to kill and he's kind of trivializing your content. Um, a few a few things. Obviously, enemies with psychic damage are going to destroy this guy, so, you know, don't don't overdo it, because then your barbarian player will really feel like you're out to get him. Um, but uh, if you can keep them from getting too many long rests, they'll run out of rage, and then you got to, they'll, they'll have to be really strategic about you know, not uh, not taking too much damage because without rage, with their low AC, even though they've got a ton of hit points, they're they're moderately squishy. Um, a lot of ranged enemies will be good if you're trying to you know uh, get around the bear barb tank and uh, you know do damage to other characters. Obviously, AOE area of effect attacks and spells and things too. Um, Spells or abilities that will knock the barbarian unconscious uh, or restrain or hold them to keep them from attacking something or taking damage that, that will make their rage drop. 
Um, also, you know, doing things to get them to use their reaction, sort of baiting that reaction. So, you know, again, the sentinels get a free hit if someone, if an enemy that they're standing next to attacks somebody else, and maybe you bait that and get them to use their reaction to get that free attack on somebody, but then, you know, a powerful melee enemy can run around them, their reaction's been used, they can't reach out and, and poke them and, uh, and root them, um, so things like that. Um, and enemies with high initiatives, so that they're going to outroll uh, the barbarian uh, who, who, who gets a pretty good you know, advantage on his initiative checks. But you know, if, if the enemy's going first, they attack that barbarian before he gets to go, before he gets to rage. Um, he's going to take full damage instead of half. So that'll really whittle him down uh, and start the fight on a little bit more even footing. That is our show for the week. Um, please tune in next week as we either take a look at a different build and try and optimize it. Or I'm actually considering uh, having my, my friend and the guy who, who acts as a dungeon master for, for a group of us um, to come on and we might do an unoptimized episode and kind of talk about some of these builds that we've been discussing thus far. But, uh, you know, talk about ways that you could role play them, ideas for role playing, ideas to make them unique and your own. Um, ways to make it more fun and not just about the numbers. I think that might be kind of fun to do. Um, don't forget, if you want to check out the math uh, you, you, of, of you know any of this stuff, I'm going to have links posted in the show notes if you're watching this on YouTube or uh, in the uh, sorry in the video description on YouTube. Show notes uh, if you're listening to this as a podcast. And as always, um, please subscribe, leave reviews, like. Uh, follow, et cetera, et cetera, on whatever version you're using to consume this content. I really appreciate that. Uh, also, same thing for our social media pages, Facebook, um, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look for D&D ampersand, D&D optimized. Um, or, of course, as always, feel free to email questions or suggestions to a build that you'd like me to do a deep dive on at dnd the letter n optimized dnd optimized at gmail.com give me some details on what the build entails exactly and i will do my best to optimize it for you thanks again everybody really appreciate it and we'll see you next time